fall in your mouth, possibly no side effect. <laughs> now, this is currently in the half cock position. It is a safety of sorts. It should not go off. I say should. From time to time, the, uh, the metal mechanism should result in uh, less ideal things happening. Let's just wipe this for We've been very muggy deck. I'd like to be very, I would like this to go off. On wet and rainy days, they would not even bother having a battle. Because gunpowder turns to a sludge in the rain. So like, uh, I believe you were saying uh, the, the provincial army during yeah. the American Revolution. American Revolution outside of Philadelphia when they called it the Battle of the Clouds because all of a sudden the clouds opened up after the armies had been fighting away for about 20 minutes. And uh, they're both now standing there with completely useless weapons in their hands, facing off against one another. And after about half an hour of that, they all just shrugged and went home. Hmm. Yeah, best, best to keep your powder dry. So after priming the pan down there, I would pour the rest of the powder down the barrel. At this point, I would put the muscle ball down. Hopefully it does not go off half cock, as I would no longer have any sinus problems after that. <laughs> uh, question over there. Is that a real musket or is that a fake musket? It is a, well, it is a real musket. It will fire off. However, it would be quite bad to use an original musket as it would probably explode in my face. And I like my face. It will actually shoot. You'll see. Now, unfortunately... They discourage us from using actual lead balls. Yeah, we yeah. can't actually be using lead balls, though, because they're bad for tourism. We shut out too many windows. <laughs> and so instead, I'll be using these cardboard fiber wads. This will be used to compress the gunpowder. Nice and well. Now, a joke that they like to make here is that we get to fire off these muskets every day. <laughs> We're firing off these fiber wads every day. <laughs> every day we're getting our fiber, and as you know, we are regulars. <laughs> you can complete the joke. I don't get it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here it's off, and I get tired of it. Now, I said before, this is inaccurate. We will be firing off the men about where that wall is over there. We're not doing that very accurately. This, the musket ball can end up pretty deadly at 300 feet away, so it's more accurate than 100, 100 feet. But while it's flying out, the musket ball loosely bounces down, and it is described as fluttering pack in accounts of soldiers of the day. I'm whizzing. I'll probably hit that bucket. Two, three times out of ten, ending up everywhere else around the bucket. Usually, uh, this is not a sight on the end. This is a bayonet, bayonet lug. Hold the bayonet for when we are too close. We start hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah, then. Well, so we we are three times a minute for a well-trained soldier. In order to do this nice and well ballet we do on the battlefield, there are 15 to 25 commands in total using pamphlets to try to standardize them. In fact, such variance is a bad sign for a bureaucracy. But to uh, simplify things, we'll do the last three commands. Make ready, present, get fire. Do not say aim. We're just presenting. This is a gentleman's war. We just aim in the general direction of the enemy and hope they fall down. Can you give me these three commands? Sir. Make ready. Present. Give fire. Swear loudly. No, that's the fourth command. Boom. Boom. Oh, boy. Let's try that again. So, make ready. Three. Present. Give fire. No spark. No spark. We're going to have a trouble with humidity. The humidity is detrimental. Do not mess with the flint while there is a charge in the pan. That is a very bad idea. That is how you, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoot your face off, basically. Can we just move the Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah.